Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to add new grid types to Player Building System V2. So after following this, you'll know how to um, create new types of grids that you can uh, snap build parts to. Um, so to get started, we're going to go to the Blueprints folder, then to the Grids folder. We're going to uh, right click the Master Grid and do Create Child Blueprint. And I'm just going to call mine BP underscore New Grid. You can call yours whatever you like. Um, and we will um, then we're going to um, go to blueprints again, go to other. Uh, we want to go to enum and we want to find the uh, build type that will just bring us over here. And we're going to create a new one. And I'm going to call this um, new grid. Then we're going to save, go back to our showcase, then to blueprints, grids, and we're going to open up our new grid. And in here, we're going to go to class defaults and set our grid type to new grid like that. We can also um, enable show grids, which will be helpful later when we're positioning the grids. So you can enable that if you like. Um, it's just a debugging option. So when you actually um, are finished, you can just untick that to uh, hide the grids again. Next, we're going to go to the uh, blueprints folder again, and we're going to go to other, uh, sorry, not other, we'll search for um, grid and we want the grid manager, so we'll open that up. And in here, we're gonna to go to select grid actor. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click the roof grid and do duplicate. We'll just call this new grid actor. And we'll drag that in and connect that up to our new grid uh, in here. Next, we're gonna to go to create grids or create grid actor. And in here, we're just gonna uh, copy what's already done with the other grid. So we're gonna set our new grid, uh, get the new grid variable, and connect that up here, and plug it in like this. So there as well. Then we're gonna go back to our showcase and then to the player building system, and we're gonna search for a function. And we wanna open up the PBS functions uh, blueprint. Then go to grid classes and in here we want to set the new grid class to the um, grid we created so that would be the bp new grid then we can compile next we're going to go back to the showcase and we'll search for grid component we can open that up now in here um, your settings are going to depend on your uh, what you're using your grid for um, but we go to presets grid sizes we'll uh, add a new element you can see that um, we've got sort of an entry for every grid type so foundation grids are this size wall grids are this size triangle uh, foundations this size so these are the um, preset sizes for our grids um, so we've just added a new one so we want to set this to new grid now you can set the sizes up however you like um, i'm just going to set mine to be say um, 100 by 100 by 100 um, so this is really going to depend on what you're doing with your grid um, but the good thing about this is we only have to enter it here and um, now whenever we use a grid component it will just use that size um, so now we can just compile this next I'm going to be creating a new build part just um, as an example to show you guys um, how to set up new grids um, and have the uh, build part snap to them so uh, I'm going to go to the blueprints folder then to the build parts going to right click the um, master build part and do create child blueprint i'm going to call this bp uh, new build part um, then i'm going to go um, and open up the build part list and in here we're just going to add a new row um, i'm just going to call mine new build part and i'm not going to fill out all the details um, but i'll just call this new build part um, and the type I'm going to set to new grid then um, I'm going to do I'm not going to require grid um, for this but if you want the build part to have to require a grid you can tick that on um, in fact I will tick this on um, and I'll show you how that works um, next we've got yeah, rotation whether or not the collision ignores floors and um, for this video I'm just going to leave these blank um, the blueprint will be our new um, build part that I just created. Uh, I'm not going to set a resource cost just uh, to make it easier for the video. 
um, the icon I'll just use the fire icon uh, for this um, and then everything else um, we can just leave as uh, blank I do explain these uh, settings in a little bit more detail in the adding furniture video so you may want to check that out um, but in this video we're just focusing on the grid really so uh, we'll go back to the showcase and we're going to open up our new build part and in here um, so there's two parts to this we the way I'm going to be setting this up is our new build part is going to snap um, to grids so similar to how like walls do um, but we won't be able to place this build part on the ground um, so to do that I'm also going to open up the we'll open up the campfire and what we're going to do is just double click any component to go to the viewport and we're going to add a new grid to our fire and what this will do is um, it will mean that we can snap our new build part to our fire build part so I'm going to do add component and search for grid and I'm just going to add that I'm just going to move it above the fire about here uh, like that now uh, with our grid component selected we've got a few settings in here so the first one is grid type which we're going to set to our new grid because that's the type of grid we want to be using um, check radius is used you can see if we uh, hover over it you'll get a description but for 99% of the time you won't need to change this so we'll just leave this as 200 um, then we've got our size settings so um, by default it will just use the size that we set earlier um, in the grid component uh, for the new grid um, but if we wanted to um, say this grid was special um, and we wanted it to have a special custom size we could enable use custom size and set the size here as well if we wanted to um, attached to build part is used for things um, so if your your build part moves you may want to enable this and what that will do is any build part that we build on the grid will be attached to this build part um, so a place that this is used by default is the locks uh, when you um, build a lock on the door obviously it needs to attach to the door so it moves um, when the door moves um, for this build part we don't need to enable that but yeah if your build part is a moving one you will need to enable uh, this setting here uh, rotation offsets um, basically your build part when it snaps to the grid will use whatever rotation your grid uh, has um, but with the rotation offset you can actually add um, rotations um, here and that will uh, it won't affect the grid but it will affect um, the build part when we snap to it um, so that's just an extra option you probably won't need to use it very often um, but it's it's there if you need to um, so now we can compile in the future there may be additional settings here that you can uh, change if you ever don't know what a saying does you can just hover over it and you'll get a full uh, tooltip um, explaining what it does so next we need to um, add our new build part that we've created to our uh, radial menu um, I'm just going to do this very quickly just by replacing one of the existing ones um, I do have a separate video that explains the radial menus um, in a lot more detail um, but for this I'm just going to select the wall for example and uh, I'm just going to change the build part to our uh, new uh, new build part that we created um, just so we have an easy way to select it and build next we're going to go to our new build part um, and add a few things to that so uh, that's in our blueprints build part then new build part now the first thing we're going to add is building collision so that's what the text if anything is overlapping our build part um, and then whether or not we can build because of that so we're going to add a new collision component I'm just going to use a box collision but you can use uh, the sphere as well um, so I'm just going to add that I'm just going to call mine build collision um, then the important thing is once you go into tags you need to add a new tag and it needs to be build collision um, it needs to be one word and it needs to have two, the two capitals um, and this is what tells the system that this component is our build collision um, so I'm just gonna scale mine and turn off the snapping I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna scale my build collision up a little bit just so we can see it um, like that and then anything that overlaps that um, won't, will uh, stop our building um, if you want to you can have multiple ones of these um, you can just duplicate it or add a new component um, and all you need to make sure you do is add the uh, this tag and it will use any of the components that um, have that tag as its build collision so we can compile that next I'm going to add a support component um, and what the support component does we 
when you add it just make sure you select the uh, default scene root and it will uh, add it to the root um, and what this does is when we try to build our um, build part it will do a check at this location and let's get rid of the tag toucher it will do, do a check at this location for whatever build parts we set here in the details um, and if it finds it then it says okay this build part is supported and we can build it so we're going to add um, supporting build parts i'm just going to add a new one and i'm going to set this to furniture because what we want this how i'm uh, setting this up to work is um, we'll be able to snap our build part above the campfire um, and then it will detect that the campfire is there using the support component here so i'm just going to set mine to furniture but you can use any build part you like um, support amount so this is used if you have multiple support components, what you can do. Um, and the way it works is, say you wanted it uh, so that you had two support components and both of them had to um, detect a build part at their location, you would set the support amount for each one of them to 0 0.5. Um, and then if both of them detect a build part, uh, the total amount is one and one is one means that the build part can be built. So if you had four of them, then you'd probably do 2.5 um, or whatever else. So that's how you can um, set it up so you can have multiple uh, support components. Um, next, we've got the check radius. This is how big a check it does for a build part at its location. Um, you're probably not going to need to change this from 100. 100 is probably fine. Um, indirect support, you won't need to uh, use. This is used for the floors. Um, the uh, collision type, this should just be set to build part um, at all times. And then you've got the debug mode that you can use um, and that will uh, that will show the radius of the check that it's doing. Uh, for this, we're just gonna leave that um, ticked off uh, for now. But for now, um, I'm happy with my build part, so I'm just gonna compile that. The good part about these is we can actually edit them uh, while we're playing in game. And I can show you that in a little uh, bit. But for now, we're going to jump in and we're going to uh, build our campfire quick like that. And you can see because I've got um, the grid showing for our new build part, we can see our grid. Um, now I'm going to select our new grid and you can see we've actually got an error because I forgot to do something. Um, that basically just means that in our um, build part, so new build part, go to class defaults and find the build part setting. Here we need to make sure we've set our build part. So for me, that's new, new build part, and then we can just compile. While we're in here, um, you can also set the build part's health um, and whether or not it shows the health bar UI when the player looks at it um, here. So now we can jump into the game and give this a quick test. So I'm just gonna create my campfire first. Um, we can see the grids there. Um, then we want to uh, select our new build part see it's automatically just snapped to that straight away and um, if i try and build it anywhere else it's gone red um, and then i can just click to um, place our build part and um, it's attached to our campfire um, so that's pretty much it for our you know setting up our grid um, if i wanted to i can demolish that and i'll show you quickly how we can um, edit um, our grid um, edit our build part uh, during gameplay so I'm just going to pop this window out and you can actually see if I select say our, this is our collision, if I start moving it down it's now colliding with the campfire and it's gone red um, and that's actually updating in real time and um, we can also do the same thing with the support component as well. So right now um, our support component is roughly around here and it will be colliding with our campfire so it knows the campfire is there and we can build but if I say move it over here our um, support component no longer hits the campfire so our build part can't be built so i can just move that back and uh, now it's redetecting it again and we can place um, we can also um, because our, our cube is using a support component so it requires the campfire to be there to be supported if i delete our campfire it will just delete our cube automatically um, obviously this is a fairly basic example but you could then um, go in and add uh, grid components to your new build part and have um, build parts attached to to it um, and you could set up the support components to require the new build part and then if we deleted the campfire it would delete all of the build parts um, attached to the new build part 
Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys found it useful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. And thank you for watching.